Okay, this one is a doozy. So today we're going to be talking about the Hyatt family in Enoch, Utah. In January 2023, Michael Hyatt allegedly murdered his entire family before turning the gun on himself in an atrocious murder-suicide situation. It was suspected that he murdered his 40-year-old wife, Tasha, his 78-year-old mother-in-law, Gail, and his five children, Macy, Briley, Sienna, Ammon, and Gavin. The ages were from four, so Gavin was four, all the way to Macy, who was 17. So Michael Hyatt and his wife Tasha met at Southern Utah University after Michael served a full-time mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They were married in the St. George Temple on May 10th, 2003. The couple went on to have their five children, and from the outside, they just seemed like they had the perfect life. They were all extremely active in their church, attended their weekly meetings, volunteered in their church. Michael was a prominent insurance agent, and people would drive from long distances to actually work with him. And then all of their kids were in activities and sports, and they just, they just had it together. Even after Michael was suspected to have killed his entire family in a gruesome fashion, he still received a raving obituary depicting him as an outstanding citizen, a great father, and a wonderful husband. The obituary said, each of these children were truly a cherished miracle to them. Michael made it a point to spend quality time with each and every one of his children. Michael enjoyed making memories with the family. It also said that he lived a life of service. Whether it was serving in the church or in the community, he was willing to help with whatever was needed. So even after the obituary was shared at the, on the funeral homepage, there were so many people who commented in support of Michael, saying things like, he was always good to us and always willing to lend a helping hand. We don't know the whys and hows, but I do know it's not our right to judge. And the Lord loves Michael very much. And another person wrote, I'm grateful for his example of Christ-like love and service. His life and his friendship, I pray that peace and comfort will come to his family left behind with the reassurance that you will be together again one day. None of the comments actually mention the death of his family and how he was the one to most likely have murdered them all. The funeral home actually ended up making the obituary private so people could no longer make any comments. In everybody's eyes, this was the perfect family. And Michael was perfect. Even after he murdered his family, people still were confused and thinking he was perfect. So something just went wrong all of a sudden, right? He just snapped. Maybe not. In 2020, Macy, the couple's oldest daughter, talked to the police about her father's violent tendencies. A family friend had called the police suspecting child abuse. Macy said that he was extremely abusive and he would physically assault her. She even shared about a time in which he was so upset that he choked her. Macy said that she was very afraid that he was going to keep her from breathing and end up killing her. At the time, Macy was 14 and it didn't seem like people were taking her very seriously. Although an investigation was launched on August 27, 2020, the police stated that there was insufficient evidence. Even though she told them that his violent episodes would involve shaking, choking, and his most recent was that he grabbed her by the shoulders and shoved her into the couch and banged her into a wooden piece. So what did Michael have to say about all these allegations? He said, if he had ever done these things, it was not meant to be an assault. He then called her mouthy, which is why he feels such strong anger towards her. And then he went on to blame it on the death of his father. The police officers were questioned after the death of the family, and they upheld their decision to not make any arrests that day. And they said that they take matters of abuse extremely seriously. On December 21st, 2022, Tasha Hyatt had enough of Michael. We aren't entirely sure what resulted in her making the decision, but she did file for divorce. He was served the papers on December 27, 2022, and the murders happened on January 4th, 2023. So only a short time later. We can't say with absolute certainty what his reasoning was to kill his whole family, 
But it clearly appears that the impending divorce really set him off and he figured if they couldn't be together, then they should all be dead. But like I said, we don't know for sure. Following the horrific ordeal, the seven victims were remembered at a memorial service at their church building. There were over 700 people in attendance and they filled every pew in the chapel and all of the folding chairs in the connecting gym. Multiple people spoke throughout the memorial service and shared their lovely memories of each of the family members who lost their lives. One of Tasha's sisters said, Tasha was an incredible mother who constantly sacrificed everything for her children. She taught them love, kindness, service, dedication, and the gospel of Christ through her example. People also said that Tasha loved her role as young women's president in her church. This is a group of girls from 11 to 17 who come together to learn about the Savior and participate in fun activities. Ultimately, many people were so confused and some shared that they wished that they would have been able to prevent the incident from ever happening. But how would they know? So many people, even after the killings, expressed their love for him and how amazing he was. So clearly, people didn't ever see what he was truly capable of doing. Nobody can be blamed for this except for Michael. Even the police officers who came to the home earlier, Macy and the other children looked taken care of and they had no visible injuries. It's so hard to step in when there's no physical evidence. This is just something that happened that no one could have seen happening. Of course, we could probably go back and find red flags, but in the moment, nobody was seeing those. Obviously, something was going on that we don't know because Tasha did file for a divorce and we don't know why she did. But all we can do now is honor the memories of those who were murdered. Um, that's all for me. Thank you for watching. The crime happens here. Be safe and be kind. Bye.